Gopi Karana Janna Mahajana Manohara Gopi Karana Janna Mahajana Manohara Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 
नमस्ते वसुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नर चरोम दीं सरस्वती व्यास तथोचयुद्रेशु नित्यं भागवत सेवाया भागवती उत्तम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवती नैष्टिकीडिंग श्रीमद्भागवत कैंटो फोर चैप्टर नंबर ट्वेंटी फाइव द कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स or the description of the characteristics of king puranjana text number 2 rudra gitam bhagavata stotram sarve prachetasa जप अंत तपस् वर्षण आयुत जले रुद्रगीत भगवता सर्वे जपंतस्ते तपस्ते वर्षण आयुत जले रुद्रगीत भगवता सर्वे जपंतस्ते तपस्ते वर्षण आयुत जले रुद्रगीत भगवता सर्वे जपंतस्ते तपस्ते वर्षण आयुत जले रुद्रगीत भगवता सर्वे प्रचेत तपस्ते वर्षाण आयुत जले च 
The song sung by Lord Shiva. Bhagavata of the Lord. Stotram prayer. Sarve all pratetasa. The princes known as the Prachetas. Japanta reciting Te all of them Tapa austerity Tepo executed. Varshanam of years, Ayutam ten thousand, Jale within the water. Translation All the Pracheta princes simply stood in the water for ten thousand years and recited the prayers given to them by Lord Shiva. Purport by Srila Prabhupada Of course, in the modern age, one may be amazed how the princes could stand in the water for 10,000 years. However, living within air or living within water is the same process. One simply has to learn how to do it. The aquatics live within water for their whole lifespan. Certain favorable conditions are created to enable them to live within water. In those days, however, People used to live for 100,000 years. Out of so many years, if one could spare 10,000 years for the sake of austerity, he would be assured of success in his future life. This was not very astonishing. Although such a feat is impossible in this age, it was quite possible in Satya Yuga. To Jong Wan. Mm -hmm. 
王子们怎么能站在水中查一万年之久？然而，生活在由大气包围的环境中，和生活在水的世界里，这就成是一样的。人们只要学习如何去做就是了。水生物整个一生都生活在水中，而他们的身体被创造成正适合他们生活在水中。在远古黄金年代，人们的寿命都是十万年。在有这样长的寿命的情况下，人们如果能用一万年的时间苦修，就必定能在将来的生活中获得成功。这并不太令人惊奇，这虽然在如今这个年代中是不可能的事，但在黄金年代中是可以做到的。Om Ajnana Tmarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksur Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Vanchakaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhaevacha Patita Nam Pavanhebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare so we heard how the prachetas, they have to become good kings, they have to take the position of their father, take the responsibility of their father and they have to take over the kingdom and rule the kingdom. So before they could take over the position of their father, their father first of all sent them to do some austerity so that they would become strong, they would become uh, fixed in their determination and they would control their mind and senses. So for their austerity we're told they had to, they stood in the water for 10,000 years and at the same time they recited the prayer also which had been given to them by Lord Shiva. So Srila Prabhupada points out that this incident took place in the Satya Yuga, not in the Kali Yuga but Satya Yuga. So in the Satya Yuga people live 100,000 years. Just like <laughs> in China we say Chang Sho Tun. <laughs> Go to, there's a village where people live a long life. There's this one village in China they say Everybody there, they have a long life, they live a lot and so many people are going there to have a long life, to live a long time. So, uh, <laughs> the, the Satya Yuga, they live 100,000 years and they were spending 10,000 years to do austerity. And Srila Prabhupada said that if you do that, if you give, so 10,000 years means one-tenth, means 10% 10 of your life. Just like if we live 100 years, probably we won't live 100 years. You know how long you will live? 70, 80 years, right? So you, if you give one-tenth, 10% 10 of your life, to do austerity, seven or eight years or maximum ten years. If you give that kind of time to do austerity, then it can guarantee success in your future. It will be very helpful for your future life. 
if you've done some austerities because it, it's like a credit in your bank account, you know? If you inherit money, then you have money in the bank and you can enjoy the money, spend your father's money. But maybe your father is not very rich. Maybe your father is an ordinary person. So how can we get wealth? We can get wealth by doing austerity. By doing austerity like the prachetas. Jai Jagannath Paladev Subhadra Radha Krishna Kanaya Ki Jai We can get wealth by doing austerities. In the Bhagavad Gita it, it says acts of sacrifice, charity and austerity should never be given up. So these three things are very good to do charity, to do some sacrifice and to do some austerity. So what austerity can we do? We cannot go and stand in the water for 10,000 years. We could not even stand in the water for 10 days. What to speak of 10,000 years. But our austerity is to do Sankirtan and Sankirtan is also sacrifice. It is also yag Yagna. Yagna by Vishnu. In the Kali Yuga there's only one Yagya possible. Although we do fire Yagya, when we have initiation they do the Yagya. But actually the real Yagya is Sankirtan. The real Yagya is the, tank, the chanting of the holy names. When we take part in the Sankirtan Yagya, it's a great austerity. And by that austerity we become rich. Right? We become, if you are rich in austerity, then it will be very good for your future life. But if you never did any austerity, then I don't know what your future will be like. If we never did any austerity, we never did much charity, what charity do we have? We don't have a lot of money. We have a little wealth, not a lot, but charity, sacrifice, austerity. The austerity in the Kali Yuga is to practice Sankirtan, the chanting of the holy name. To do that, that is the real austerity and to distribute Krishna consciousness, to go out and distribute books and tell people about Krishna. That is a great austerity because you have to go, you have to meet so many nasty people, right? You go outside into the public, into the streets, not everybody is very nice and some people are not friendly at all. We have to tolerate. Devotee will accept that kind of austerity to distribute Krishna consciousness. So by doing that kind of austerity you actually become rich and, and you, you get the benefit of that. It goes to your spiritual bank account. Your spiritual bank account is what will take you to the next life, where you will go. Will you go up or will you go down? Or will you come back? Or will you go out of the material world? Will you go into the spiritual world? 
If you have a strong bank account, if you have a lot of austerity and tapashya, if you, you can go to the higher planets in the material world. But to get out of the material world, we have to have devotion, we have to have bhakti. So austerities is not really very important for us as devotees. Our austerity is in relation to service to Krishna. Just like we do some austerity on Janmastami, we try to observe fasting throughout the day. Or on Akadasi, we don't eat grains and beans on the Akadasi. That is some austerity. Austerity is getting up early in the morning, coming to Mongol Arti. For some people that's austerity. For other people that's no austerity at all. It is natural. There are many people they wake up early in the morning and they will come for the Mongol Arti. And you can see here in Malaysia the Mongol Arti it's not very early, it's five o'clock. In India it's 4.30, but Malaysia time is a little different from India, so the Mongol Arti is a little later. But it's not a great tapasya to get up early in the morning and to go to temple. But to go out on Sankirtan, and to distribute books and to tell people about Krishna, that is an austerity. That is a little difficult because people may not, people won't like it. And they'll say, why are you doing this? Why are you bothering me? Why are you troubling me? And it is also an austerity to try to engage people in Krishna consciousness, to ask people to help in the service of Krishna. We will ask them, please come to temple. We will ask people, just like maybe somebody has a flower shop, they're selling flowers. We will ask, can you give some flowers for the temple? Are you selling vegetables? We'll say, why don't you donate some vegetables for the temple, for Krishna? Like that, we will try to engage people in Krishna's service. And so, that it, it, is, it is difficult sometimes to do these things, to try to engage people in Krishna's service. Because this is the material world and people are very materialistic. We're all thinking about our own self. We're very selfish. But we try to get them to serve Krishna, to give for the pleasure of Krishna. Of course, Malaysia is a very good country that people here are all usually religious. Unlike your country where people are more atheistic. But in this country, you know, this is a religious country. And people are either Muslim, majority is Muslim, and then there are Christian, there are also Buddhists, and there's also some Hindu. And people are welcome to worship, to be religious here. In this country, it, it's, it's appreciated, it's understood that religion is a good thing. To find people who are atheists, not very common here. In this country, practically everybody has some kind of religious belief. So it, it's, a, it's a, a good country. Of course, some of the traditions like the Islamic tradition, they're 
clothes. They're, they don't mix with the other religions. And so if, if you offer them a book, they'll simply say, I am Muslim. So that means they cannot take the book. They cannot talk to you or take any interest in what you're doing because they have their own religion. But anyway, we respect them and they respect us. They give us the right to put on our festivals. We put on Rathi Atra festivals around the country and we get permission from the police and they help us. So it's very good, very special. Mm. So we're, of course, because this is Kali Yuga, so atheism is there, not only in your country, but even in Western countries, atheism is there. I, I, I was telling the devotees how uh, some devotees I know who, who are in Australia, they had a Krishna yoga club in the university at Canberra. Canberra is the capital of Australia and they have the, uh, the ANU, Australia National University is there. So they had a Krishna yoga club there. But the place where they had the, the meeting for the Krishna yoga club, after they had finished the meeting, the next group to come in and use the hall were the atheists. <laughs> the atheist society. And the atheist society came in and they saw the devotees and, oh, look at this, oh, yeah. you know, they are very nasty, very rude. And so, even in places like universities where supposed, people are supposed to be educated, people can be atheists, they can be blind, they don't, and, and as far as austerity goes, these people have no idea what is austerity. So austerity, of course, can be used for bad purposes. There is austerity in the different modes. There's austerity in the mode of goodness, austerity in the mode of passion, and austerity in the mode of ignorance. And you can see, you can see some people do austerity, like in Srimad Bhagavatam, there was Harangi Kashipu doing austerity. He went to do austerities and he was doing austerities for so long that all the ants, they ate all of the flesh of his body. He was standing on one leg and he was just simply meditating and he was standing for thousands of years. Again, with Satya Yuga, but he was doing austerity, but his, he had a material purpose in mind, right? Haranyakashipu, he wanted to get benediction from Lord Brahma. Lord Brahma finally came and rejuvenated his body and then Haranyakashipu asked Brahma, please bless me that I should not die. So he wanted that kind of blessing, you see, very materialistic. And Brahma said, well, I cannot give you that because I also die. So I cannot give you what I don't have. And so then Haranyakashipu put other conditions that I should not die in the day and I should not die in the night. And I should not be killed by any man or any animal. And I should not be killed on the land or in the water. So many conditions. He thought, in this way he thought he would avoid death. So materialistic people, they do austerities. If you come here to Malaysia in the month of January usually, they have a festival called Thai Pusa and during that time many people here they will worship Murga. 
Murga is one of the sons of Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva had two sons. One you know as Ganesh with the elephant head and the pot belly. Ganesh, Lord Ganesh is one son. The other son is Kartikeya but his other name is Murga. South Indian people they call the son of uh, Lord Shiva as Murga and many people worship him. He's mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna said, among generals I am Murga or Kartikeya. So they have a big festival at that time and many people they'll bring milk to offer to the deity of Murga. But when they bring the milk, they will also, they will stick hooks into their body. And sometimes they will put a metal rod through their mouth, right through the mouth, a big metal rod, right through the mouth. And, and they will stick things into their face and they will do all of these things. And at the same time they're carrying milk and they will also dance. <laughs> and <laughs> dancing as they go. And some, they will carry a big, a big, uh, Kaveri, yeah, they carry this Kaveri which is a very decorative thing with many peacock feathers and they all carry and they dance and it, it's, it's, it's very colourful to see actually. So uh, it's a big event and thousands and thousands of people come. But it's more in the mode of ignorance than in the mode of goodness. They're worshipping the son of Lord Shiva, but torturing the body. Some people even walk on nails. They have the shoes with the upturned nails, and they will walk on the nails all the way to the temple to deliver the milk to Murga. Sometimes they will do it, you know, to get a blessing, some blessing they want from the God, like that. But it. It's not pure devotion. It's very much influenced by the modes of nature. So you see that kind of worship is done. Torturing the body, doing these kind of things. This is not the, in the line of devotion at all. Austerity in the mode of goodness is you're doing some austerity to, you want to enjoy the benefit. Maybe you want to destroy the sinful reactions which we've done in the past. People often do some austerities for that purpose. That, oh, I was very sinful, I did so many bad things, so I will do some austerity. And they will do some austerity for that purpose. Mm. And again, different kinds of austerity. It can be fasting, maybe can you, some people do monavrat, a vow of silence. They make a vow that I will not speak. And some people make the vow, I will not speak for five years. And for five years they don't speak. I was in India one time. And we were traveling, we had a van and we, we were traveling and we saw there was one temple on the side of the road. It was halfway up a mountain and there was a temple there in the mountain. So we thought, let's go and see what's going on and we, and we went to the, see the temple and fortunately we brought a book with us and so we got into the temple and there was one Babaji there, one sadhu, and he saw us and he went. <laughs> you know, tell me, he didn't speak, you see, he made a vow not to speak. So anyway, we spoke. <laughs> we could speak, so we were speaking, telling him, we are from Hare Krishna movement, and we have temples all over the world, and we are preaching this message, and this is our book, Bhagavad Gita, and this very nice book, you can see, we showed him the book, and, and then he had a board with chalk, and he wrote on this board, how much is it? <laughs> and so we sold him the book. 
he bought a book. He couldn't speak. He wasn't speaking, but he, he had a board and he was writing, you see. So, like that. So he was doing some austerity, but that kind of austerity, mm, what is better, you see, we also do our austerity is to speak about Krishna, to talk about Krishna and to chant the name of Krishna. That is our, that is real control of the tongue. Just to make a vow of silence, you don't say anything bad, but you don't do any good either. Because your mind is still thinking so many thoughts. So to just make a vow of silence, it will not be very good, it will not benefit you very much. But if you chant Hare Krishna mantra, and if you preach about Krishna, then it's very powerful and you get a lot of benefit. You get bhakti, you get devotion. But if you just make a vow, see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil, you're not doing anything bad, but you're not doing anything good either. But in Krishna consciousness we learn to do good. See, see the deities. Chant Hare Krishna and hear about Krishna. So this is, this is better than austerity, much higher than austerity to do these activities in relation to Krishna. And you get the benefit very quickly. You don't need to spend 10,000 years that very quickly you can get the benefit. Srimad Bhagavatam tells about another great sage, uh, Kardama Muni. There was this one man, Kardama. He did Astanga Yoga. Any yoga teachers here? Any of you yoga teachers? Yeah? Yoga teachers? So, Kardama Muni, he was doing Astanga Yoga. 10,000 years he was doing meditation, pranayama. Well, he wasn't just doing asana, you know, he was pranayama, prachahara, dharna, dhyana, samadhi. He was in samadhi, he could go to samadhi, he on the final stage of astanga. And for 10,000 years he was doing this astanga yoga in a cave and he had his own ashram away from the world. For ten thousand, and even the Lord had come to him. He'd had, he'd met the supreme personality of Godhead. And so after ten thousand years, then the Lord told him, He said, "Don't worry." He said, "There's a suitable girl coming to you." He said, "You should accept her. She will make a nice wife for you." So he had practiced brahmacharya for ten thousand years, and then. He accepted this girl, Devahuti. Devahuti, she was the daughter of Swambhu Ramanu. So she came and he took her as his wife. And so he did yoga for 10,000 years. And then he got married, had his wife, lived in family life, had children, and then afterwards then left. Then he was able to renounce afterwards. Hmm. So, that was the result of his yoga. Hmm. There was another yogi, Sobari Muni. Maybe you've read about Sobari Muni. He's in the Krishna book also. He was meditating in the bottom of the Yamuna. He was a great yogi. As Prabhupada said here, you can you can go out in the bottom of the water, you can meditate there. So he was in, in the bottom, he was not just standing in the water, he was under the water. And he was meditating there in the bottom of the Yamuna River. But what happened was Garuda, Garuda came 
And Garuda likes fish. And he took this one big fish out of the Yamuna River. So Sabari Muni felt very bad about it. He said, oh, that Garuda is taking that poor fish away. That was a big fish, you know. And Garuda took the fish away. So he said, he cursed Garuda. He put a curse on Garuda. If that Garuda ever comes here again to get fit, he will die. Actually, Garuda is very powerful. Garuda is a servant, personal servant of the Lord. So the curse could not really affect Garuda because Garuda is so powerful. The but still Garuda thought, well, he's cursed me, okay, I won't go there again. There's fish other places, I can get fish other places, I don't need to go there. But that Subhari Muni, although he was in the bottom of the river, he was, he was meditating there, he, he saw two fish. And he saw these two fish were copulating, they were, you know, having sexual relationship with each other, copulating with each other. And so he became disturbed. He was a yogi and he was in the bottom of the Yamuna. His mind became agitated and he came out of the Yamuna river and he went to look for a wife. He thought, I want to get a wife. And so there was a king nearby and that king had a lot of daughters. So he went to the king and he asked the king, he said, you know, I'd like to take a wife. Could I have one of your daughters? So the king said, well, he said, it's up to them, you can ask them. If any of them will take you for a husband, okay. So Subhari Muni approached the women but he'd been a yogi and been living in the bottom of the Yamuna, so his skin was all wrinkled and like that, it didn't look very nice. So the girls all thought, no, we don't like him, we didn't, we, they didn't want him. So he was a yogi, so he used his yoga powers. So he then rejuvenated his body. He made himself look all young and good looking and then he came again and then he asked the girl, would any of you like to get married? And they all said yes. <laughs> and he took all the daughters, all of them, they all went with him as his wives. And he'd been a yogi, he'd been living in the bottom of the Yamuna, but now he had fifty wives. Anyway, after some time he also went to the forest and his wives also went with them and they did tapasya and they went to the spiritual world. So you're not safe anywhere. Even you go and sit in the bottom of the Yamuna river, you're not safe anywhere because your mind will go with you and you can be agitated. But if you fix your mind on Krishna, then that is the safe condition. You have to fix your mind on Krishna, and then only you are safe. Okay? Any questions? Yes? Hare Krishna. Uh, you 为什么知觉是宗教吗？第二句话是：你们的这个这个和其他的宗教有什么不一样？我想问Guru <笑> said, "When we go and distribute books, people generally will ask her." Uh, is this a religion? And what is the difference between this religion and other religions? So she's asking, how should we reply? What would be the correct way to respond to this kind of question? You have to appreciate that in their country, you know, it's a socialist country. And so, 
religion is not encouraged. Hmm? So how should they answer this question? What do you think? Who would like to answer? What would you say Shiva? Shiva is a great book distributor. He distributed many books. Huh? Sometimes depends on the people. As you can say, uh, we, are, we are teaching about soul. So soul is universal. So if the religion means uh, only particular sects, arts, we are not secretary movement. Non secretary means. Yes. It's, it's not a religion like other religions. You know, religions as we know them, you're born in one country, like if you're born in this country, usually people will be Malay, they'll be Muslim. Most people, the majority people, Muslim. Chinese people, you're born in a Chinese family, you'll be probably Buddhist. Or some countries the Chinese are Christian. The other side of Malay, there's another part of West, West Malaysia, over there the Chinese people are all Catholic. Ten Jujiao. So different places, different people take a religion according to the country they're born in. Prabhu, Govinda, what do you say? Explain the Sanatana Dharma, eternal. eternal religion. Yeah, Krishna consciousness is called Sanatana Dharma, means the eternal religion. Shiva was saying we are speaking more about the soul, understand the soul. We could say also Krishna consciousness is a science. It's a science. It's not just a belief. It's a science. Generally, religions are a faith. Faith people believe something. But we, we don't say just believe this. We say this is a science. There's a, a process by which you practice this religion. <laughs> Just like the process is hearing and chanting. If you do these things, then you start to awaken Krishna God consciousness. You can awaken proper understanding, first of all, of who we are. Self-realization, you know. We, we try to relate more to yoga, that yoga is a process, yoga actually means to link and to connect. We want to connect ourselves, connect the body and the mind and everything, connect it to the Supreme, the soul to the Supreme Soul. So yoga is to connect to the Supreme Soul. Yoga is also controlling the mind and senses, controlling our mind. People are all disturbed by the mind, they don't have peace of mind. So by this process of Krishna consciousness, they can develop control over the mind and be peaceful, be free of anxiety become detached. The problem, our problems come about because we have so much attachment. But Krishna consciousness is taking away the attachment from the material to the spiritual. Krishna consciousness is helping us to understand that beside the material energy, there's a spiritual energy. The spiritual energy is the nature of the soul. And we are all souls. 
people are not thinking I'm a soul. They're simply thinking I'm a body. They think I'm a Chinese. They're thinking I'm an American, I'm an African, whatever we're thinking, I'm the body. But that body is only the dress. The Bhagavad Gita explains the difference between the body and the soul. So we want people to first of all understand who they are. Self, come to know your own self and how to control your mind and senses. This is the preliminary, this is the first step in self-realization. So I think when you meet people and tell, is this a religion, we could explain, no, this is not a religion. Because we're not a religion like all of these other religions. This is a science and you can show them the book, the science of self-realization. Come to know yourself. Yoga, it's a science, it's a process by which we can awaken our spiritual potential. So it's quite different from other religions because other religions it's all based on, you know, the, yeah, the faith, the, they, they don't have a great philosophy, some philosophy must be it's there, but... Mm. So you want to try to, we want them to understand more the, 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 the nature of this process, to come to know more about yourself, to understand your identity, the science of identity. Knowing who you are. Mm. So you can, you can approach them in that way, you can explain to them in that way. So it's quite different from other... We don't say, you have to believe. No. We, we say, you have to practice. Practice this process. Then you can feel for yourself. The proof, we say, we have a saying in English, the, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. You want to know how good this cake is? You can't tell just by looking. You have to taste it, right? So the same way, you, have, you want to understand this process, you have to try it for yourself and you will see the effect. And the effect is that our consciousness becomes transformed. We, we change through chanting the Maha Mantra by mantra, by sound vibration, sound vibration. Different sounds, they have effects on people's consciousness. <coughs> Sometimes, sometimes I see them selling recordings and they had CDs and stuff, different recordings and how they can cure different diseases according to the condition. They have type of music which will be suitable to control your mind and to make you peaceful and get you to relax. So mantras also, there are different mantras which generate different sounds, which will have different effects on the consciousness. So Maha Mantra, we are chanting the Maha Mantra, which will awaken us, our consciousness, to the spiritual platform, to know ourselves as different from the body, to know ourselves first as a soul, 
And if you go on chanting, then you'll come to know more about a Supreme Soul. So it, it's a process. Mm -hmm. Just for information, Malaysia, they have five principles, national principles. Number one is belief in God. Number that's one. Why, that's why they don't, I mean, uh, in the, any practice of any religion. Mm -hmm. So they have for any, if, if you, in Malaysia, if anyone say, I don't believe in God, they can be prosecuted. They can what? They can be charged. Oh, really? No. Yeah, if someone says, I don't believe in God, they can go to jail. They can be punished. In the USA, of course, it's also like that. In the USA, this, that, that in God we trust. It's on the, on the coin, the US dollar. It's a basic principle of the founding of the USA, the freedom of religion for everyone. And Prabhupada appreciated that, but Prabhupada went there and nobody stopped him. Nobody said, go away. That's why this country is so peaceful. Hmm? That's why this country is so peaceful. Ah, yes, Malaysia is a peaceful country. Why is it so peaceful? Because of religion, people are pious religion. So many temples and mosques and churches everywhere. It makes a big difference. Okay. Yes? Anyway, Jiggy Shikashu, the evil fan. As she was saying, what well, we say this is a science, then how can we tell people, you know, that if they say to us, you know, you're worshipping a god, you're worshipping a deity in the temple. I said, well, this is part of the science. <laughs> science means can be proven. Right? Yeah. Science means can be proven. You can experiment. Yeah, then you, do, you take part, do this work, you'll see. Huh? If you come to temple every day and you worship the deity, then you'll see the consciousness change. You're not the same anymore. But you just come and you see the deity every day and you all bow down like that. It's very powerful. So this is all part of the process, bhakti yoga. Mm -hmm. yeah. Guru Mahesh, I think in um, one of the previous class you mentioned that we can pray to Lord Shiva, uh, devotees, we can pray to help uh, remove our false ego. And I've also heard that we can pray to uh, Lord Ganesh to remove obstacles on path of devotion. So what can devotees pray to Lord Murga for Guru Mahesh? Murga? Yeah, Lord Kartikeya. Right. Well, people will, play, will pray to Lord Murga for many different things. Sometimes they will pray they want to get a son, they have no son in the family, they only have daughters, they wanted a son. Sometimes they're praying to Lord Murga, give us a son. Sometimes they'll pray like somebody may have health problem, they may pray to Lord Murga, cure their disease. Huh? <laughs> Pass the exams, yeah. But, uh, usually, the, 
The Deva worship, they ask everything under the sun. Yeah. <laughs> This is Deva worship, so there's no limit to what you can ask. They have many desires, <laughs> they will come and they will ask all of these things. One, uh, one headmistress, one headmistress Maharaj, in uh, Tamil school, uh, one headmistress, uh -huh. the result went up a bit. So she said, because I asked the students to recite Gayatri Mantra. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the following year the result went down. <laughs> and I saw them crying. <laughs> okay. Hare Krishna. Shri Prabhupada ki, Srimad Bhagavatam ki. No, they said uh, that when the school result ran up, I congratulated the headmistress. She said, Wow, oh, I asked my student to recite Gayatri Mantra every morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Brahma Gayatri. Mm -hmm. that, that's the only mantra. Mm -hmm. <coughs>